Hi, this is Don the Druid, and we're here today at Pagan Pride Day in Charlotte, North Carolina. The days are still hot in many areas, but there is a definite crispness to the morning and evening air. Magic swirls about us as the leaves gradually start to change from green to brilliant jewel tones and fall to the ground. Soon when we wake, frost will glitter and gild the fall asters and chrysanthemums and cool weather vegetables still left in the garden. In the country, the stillness is pierced by the hunter's gun as the yearly series of hunting seasons has started. For Wiccans, this is a season of Maybon, the second harvest festival. Maybon, which means divine child, is a time when nature is preparing for physical death, as with the falling leaves, and symbolic death, as with hibernating animals and dormant plants. In many traditions, the god and goddess appears during Maybon as an elderly couple, embracing the aspect of the sage and the crone. Maybon is a time for taking stock and reflecting on the harvests of our life. This is why many communities hold their pagan pride days around Maybon and choose to hold public Maybon harvest rituals. It is a time of year that is accessible to everyone. It's known collectively throughout the country as Pagan Pride Day a series of festivals and events where the pagan community is afforded the opportunity to display their ideas and beliefs in a family-friendly setting. During many pagan pride days, lectures are held and crafts are provided for kids. A keynote speaker often appears and vendors are encouraged to rent booths for the event. Charlotte Pagan Pride Day has been going strong for seven years now. Miles Batty stepped into the role of director of the event in 2007. Being a hard man to corner, I was forced to turn to the assistant director, Tony Brown. Our regular viewers may know Tony from our own show. I managed to catch him throughout the day to discuss the time and effort it takes to put on such an event. Uh, pagan Pride Day uh, requires months of planning. Uh, a lot of people put a lot of effort into it uh, to, because we only get one shot at it each year. While speaking to Mr. Brown throughout the event, we discussed some suggestions for folks willing to put on their own PPD in their own area. His first piece of advice was to attend. Go to uh, other Pagan Pride Days, even if it takes you a, a, a car drive or two. If you, have to, if you have to spend a couple hours on the road, it's worth it to see what's going right, what's going wrong, and, and develop strategies for how you can uh, capitalize on their uh their good ideas and fix their bad ideas. Miles suggested that checking with the national organization should be top priority. Mr. Brown concurred, pointing out the basic process involved. Pag Pagan Pride Day is an international project and it's uh, controlled from a, uh, a central board of directors. So if you want to host a Pagan Pride Day, you need to be approved as a local coordinator. And once you are, then you'll be added to an email list that all the local coordinators are on and we swap ideas back and forth on there. The estimated attendance of the Charlotte Pagan Pride Day is around 300 people for the day. According to Mr. Brown, this is average for their efforts. However, that's not what is important when holding this type of festival. I, the thing that's important to me is when I see non-pagans come and learn about paganism. It, I mean, it's great when, uh, when the various pagan groups that sometimes don't really get together or have a lot of interaction do have that chance to to sort of build friendships and network, but the best part for me is when someone can learn something about our faith. Miles Batty, Mr. Brown, as well as many other folks put a lot of effort and time into this event, and Circle Round was very honored to have attended. When asked for his hopes for the day, Tony was short and sweet with his reply. Uh, pa Pagan Pride Day is meant to be fun, and uh, that's, that's what I like to see is when we have a good time. If you are interested in heading up your own community's Pagan Pride Day, or just interested in possible Pagan Pride Days in your own area, feel free to visit PaganPride.org. My name is Miles, and you are watching Circle Around TV. What do you think about Pagan Pride Day? I think it's a, a, absolutely a wonderful opportunity for those in paganism to 
present themselves to the general public. Is this your first Pagan Pride Day? I guess it is. And what do you think about it? Uh, like I said, it's very interesting. I've uh, had a good time so far. Uh, lots of good vendors out here. Are you enjoying the day? Yes, I am. Excellent. Thank you very much. So what do you think about Pagan Pride Day? It's awesome. Great place to be. Is this your first Pagan Pride Day? No, this is our third. <laughs> That's good. Uh, what do you think about this Pagan Pride Day in particular? Hmm. Better weather, great people, nice atmosphere. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Uh, I come to Pagan Pride Day for uh, the fellowship. You get to see people that you only see once or twice a year. Uh, great vendors and uh, great rituals. Welcome to Craft Corner with me, Professor Fluffy Cuddlekins, and my lovely assistant, Sarah. Hello, Sarah. Hello. Today, Sarah and I will be making God's Eyes. The God's Eye is a craft out of sticks and yarn. To make God's Eyes, you'll need the following things. Some sticks, some yarn, and a pair of scissors. Traditionally, most people use popsicle sticks when making God's eyes. We're using coffee stirrers. Sarah is tying the coffee stirrers together and then putting them into a cross shape. Sarah then takes the yarn and wraps it over and under, over and under. When you reach the end of your wrapping, all you have to do is tie off the yarn at the top. If you keep a little tail of yarn, you'll have something to hang it up by. Very good. Some say the eye represents the actual eye of the gods and how they are watching you when you are finished, the god's eyes are very good for hanging for talismans or amulets. Some associate the four points of the elements with the four points of the stick. And the yarn represents infinity. Mm, infinity. I like that. Mm -hmm. Do you like that? I do. Thank you for watching Craft Corner and thank you, Sarah for helping us make God's eyes. <laughs> Thank you for having me. You. Okay, you <laughs>